Perpetual light will shine on your saints, O Lord, and life without end forever. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, in this most unusual year, this is the first time we've ever celebrated the Scal Convocation Mass in July. It's the first time we ever had it on a weekday that I'm aware of. Uh, and uh, less than 24 hours ago, found out that the celebrant and homilist was not going to be able to be here, and for a very good reason. Uh, so, this most unusual year, we gather for our annual diocesan Scal Convocation Mass, and on behalf of Bishop Malesic, uh, welcome, and uh, again, welcome to St. Regis, as uh, I am Father George Saltrick, diocesan Scal Chaplain, uh, and also Pastor of St. Regis. We gather uh, to give our praise and thanksgiving to God, as we do every time we gather, in a very particular way, as we gather at this Mass every year, it's an opportunity for us to celebrate Catholic scouting in our diocese. Uh, not only those who are receiving emblems, although they get the lion's share of attention today, um, but we celebrate and we're thankful for the fact that uh, we have historically had a very strong scouting program in our diocese. Uh, and so we celebrate um, as scouts, as members of the scouting family, uh, how we can continue to build that uh, and how our faith feeds our scouting careers and how our scouting careers feed our faith. As we begin our celebration, we do so mindful that we are always in need of God's mercy because we do not always live up to the call that we have as disciples. And so we ask our merciful God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Extolling your might, O Lord, we humbly implore you that as St. George imitated the passion of the Lord, so may he lend us ready help in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. The one who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Then he said, Write these words down, for they are trustworthy and true. He said to me, they are accomplished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dreamers, we beheld the bride. 
land again. Our mouths were filled with laughter and be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes to his glory, and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I got a text about the time the 11 o'clock news came on last night uh, with a rumor that Bishop Molesic was about to be named the Bishop of Cleveland. Uh, that was followed by another text and a phone call. Um, and then uh, when I woke up this morning, everybody was asking me, was the bishop going to come tonight? And I said, well, I don't know. I can't, don't think so, um, but I haven't heard from him. I'm sure at some point I will. Um, and sure enough, I did not hear from him directly, but I did hear from Monsignor Kulik, our vicar general this morning, uh, who said that the bishop had prepared a note for me to uh, read at Mass tonight since he could not be here. Um, and this is probably about the um, second best excuse he could have for not being here, but the only better excuse would be death. Um, but when the Holy Father calls, the Holy Father calls. Uh, and so Bishop Molesic is in Cleveland today um, rather than here. Um, but uh, the plans for our convocation mass have been underway for uh, obviously quite a while. And so he was preparing his thoughts um, for, uh, for celebrating this Mass. Uh, and so I think some of those probably got put into the note. So rather than commenting on the note, I'll read the note, which is actually more like a letter. So, uh, good evening. I'm truly sorry that I cannot be with you at the annual Convocation Mass to present the Catholic religious emblems that you young scouts have worked so hard to earn. I've always enjoyed being with young people like you who are alive in their faith and are able to recognize your commitment to God and his church. I know Father George Saltrick, scouting chaplain for the diocese, and the other priests who support scouting will serve well in my absence. By now, most of you know why I am not able to be with you. This morning, I was appointed Bishop of Cleveland by Pope Francis. God calls us to do many things in our lives, and sometimes his call requires us to do things that we are not sure we're capable of doing. But our faith tells us that God always loves us and is always with us even as he challenges us. I accepted this call from God, which was made through our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to take on the leadership of a new Catholic diocese, a diocese that is much larger than the Diocese of Greensburg. I am able to accept that challenge with confidence because I know that God will be with me. In scouting, you are challenged to do things you aren't always sure you can do. Scouting stretches your minds as you learn new skills. It stretches your hearts as you learn to work with others to accomplish goals, to help each other and your troop. And it stretches your understanding of the faith through the Religious Emblems program. It takes many hours of hard work to earn these emblems. I hope this experience has taught you never to shy away from a challenge, even if you think that challenge will stretch you beyond what you think your capabilities are. Remember, God knows your capabilities, and he sent his son Jesus Christ to walk with you through those challenges and to help you. Jesus wants us to move with him because he has a plan for us, all of us, a path for each one of us. He forges the way on the specific path he wants us to take in life. You will be happiest when you follow God's plan without deviation. Jesus is the good shepherd. Follow him. I ask you to keep me in your prayers as I follow the path as, that God has directed me to take. Be assured that I will always keep you and the Diocese of Greensburg in my heart and in my prayers. God bless you and those who love you. Bishop Molesic. In this very unusual year, we're doing a lot of things differently than we normally do. For years, our Scout Convocation has always been celebrated on the first Sunday of May, um, but we were still in lockdown then um, and not able to do it. So like a lot of other things, our uh, schedule kind of got booted 
um, and back in the late part of May as we were getting ready to restart in-person worship, um, we contacted the bishop's office to get a new date on the calendar uh, for our scout convocation, and I suggested since it's going to be in the summertime, uh, why not try a weeknight instead of a Sunday, because the bishop's calendar fills up fast. Uh, so that's how we got tonight, um, and uh, it was decided that we would have it here rather than in Greensburg um, at the um, Christ Our Shepherd Center. So that's why we're here, um, and as we started to replan, because we'd started planning for this liturgy whenever uh, things got shut down, uh, whenever we went to start to update our plan um, and found out we were going to do it on a weeknight, normally it's on a Sunday and Easter, during Easter season, and so we celebrate an Easter Mass. Um, it's obviously well beyond Easter now, um, and so since it was a weekday, I suggested to the bishop that maybe instead of just a plain old weekday Mass, that we could jazz it up a little bit. Uh, and how about a votive Mass of St. George? Does anybody know why St. George is so significant? Who's St. George? Please, one of the scouts know the answer to this question. I mean, St. George is a lot of things, but why St. George and Scouts? Tell him, Sandy. He is the patron saint of Scouting. Uh, Lord Baden-Powell, founder of the Scouting Movement, uh, said that St. George should be the patron saint of Scouting. And so all Scouting, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, everybody who's in the Scouting Movement of any kind, boys and girls, um, we have uh, several patron saints, but overall the patron saint of the scouting movement is St. George. And so I said, and I put that in my note to the bishop, I said, do mass, a votive mass of St. George, he's the patron saint of scouting. And so his response to me was, Are you sure it's because it's the, he's the patron saint of scouting or because he's your patron? <laughs> <laughs> so well, two things can be true at the same time. But he is the patron saint of scouting, uh, and there's really, we don't know a whole lot about the biography of St. George, in all honesty, that we know very little about him. Um, but he lived in the late uh, 3rd century and the early 4th century, late 200s, early 300s. And he was a soldier in the Roman army, and became a Christian. And that set him on a path to eventually being martyred. There's some dispute about how he was martyred, but generally it's believed that he was beheaded, decapitated, uh, around the year 303. Early Christians was sometimes a rough life. But as a Roman soldier, as a soldier of the emperor, to become a Christian in that time when Christianity was not legal in the Roman Empire, um, he kind of set himself up, and he was martyred. You know anything else about St. George? You ever hear of St. George? And... Fighting a dragon. Everybody knows St. George and the dragon. And there's a lot of stories about what, uh, what that actually was as well. But again, of courage, of charity. As martyrs are witnesses not just when they are being put to death, but in their lives as well. The word martyr comes from Greek, and it means witness. A martyr is one who witnesses. And St. George, like so many martyrs throughout the history of the church, witness with their blood in their martyrdom. But they witness long before that. That's how they get on the track to martyrdom, by witnessing the faith in their lives. To have courage to accept the responsibility to accept the challenges that come to us in life.
And the challenge is not always about being put to death. Challenges come to us in many ways. As the bishop pointed out in his note to us tonight, he is in Cleveland accepting the challenge of taking on greater pastoral responsibility. And he is asked to take on that responsibility not because of his charm and good looks, as charming as Bishop Molesic may be, but by the witness that he has already provided five years as our bishop and all of his years of priesthood. Being a good pastor and sharing his life with those to whom he has sent. We've all been dealing with challenges in these days. We've been dealing with the challenge of coronavirus, and it's made a lot of things inconvenient. We've got yellow tape on all these pews, and we're all wearing masks, and, uh, you know, school got interrupted, summer camps getting interrupted. A lot of things are getting interrupted. It's a challenge to us. It's a challenge to us individually. It's a challenge to our families. It's a challenge to our communities. It's a challenge to scouting. It's really hard to do a lot of scouting activities when you're socially distanced, isn't it? I know that up at Camp Conestoga, camp is going on. I'm not quite sure how, but um, they are pulling off summer camp this year. And that's a challenge. All of us in our individual lives, we all have challenges. For all of you who are receiving emblems tonight, for our girls, you did wonderful work in putting together those log books and all of the other presentations that you did. For our boys, I sat on all the boards of review. And not only me, but others asked you questions, and I listened to your answers. And you are accepting challenge of faith, to live your faith. And that is a challenge sometimes for us. Because it's not always easy, especially you know, when we're in school and hopefully we're able to go back to school and get everything you know, back to something resembling normal. But we spend time around our friends, we spend time around our, cl uh, our classmates, we spend time uh, doing all those kinds of, you know, extracurricular activities and everything else. It's sometimes a challenge in those circumstances to live your faith. We're talking about St. George or anybody else. That's where we have to give witness, where we're living our lives every day, within our families with our neighbors and our community, within the scouting movement. To take up our cross, as Jesus says in the gospel tonight. We give witness. But to give witness to Jesus, to stand up for what we believe in, it doesn't mean that we have to stand up on a soapbox on a street corner and beat our chests or take a Bible or a catechism and hit other people over the head until they agree with us. That's not witness. Sometimes, yeah, we are going to be called to stand up and speak, as I and my brother priests do all the time. We give witness whenever we preach and teach. But so much more so when we're living our faith every day when we're taking the Word of God that we hear every time we come together, and taking it into our hearts, making it part of us, so that as we go out into the world, we know the Word, not just up here, but we really understand God's Word in our hearts. 
so that we can live it. So that when we hear, blessed are the merciful, and blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the pure of heart, blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor in spirit, That's us. When Jesus says, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, when Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you, when Jesus says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, the golden rule, we have to take that into our hearts and live it. That's the witness that we're called to give. To show compassion. To show patience. To show understanding, especially times that we may not agree. You know, sometimes scouts, adults are doing you a grave disservice in the way that we act toward one another whether it's our political leaders or people that we see on television or people that are celebrities just because they have a lot of money, they're not providing us a very good witness. Because it's not Christian to be without compassion. It is not Christian to shout at or try to shout over one another. It is not part of the gospel to look out for number one. That's not what we hear in there. That's not what St. George and any other saint you want to pick out witnessed in their lives. That's not accepting the challenge of faith. That's going along with the crowd. When we give witness to the faith, when we take the gospel to heart and live it, when we are being martyrs, witnesses every day, it is Christ who is working in us. As the bishop said, Bishop Lessig said in his letter, he undertakes going to Cleveland and everything that that's going to be because he knows that Jesus walks with him. Jesus walks with each of us as we have the opportunity to give witness. And as he walks with us, he gives us his grace. It was that grace that allowed St. George not only to live the faith, but to have the courage to die for the faith. It's that grace that moves loving hearts everywhere. It's that grace that's there for us to give witness. as we live our lives in the scouting movement, and I've been doing it for a long time. You know, I get asked over the years after I've been a priest, Father, why do you continue to do it? You've got a lot of other things to do as a pastor, as a priest. Why do you keep doing the scouting thing? And the answer I give is the same. You know, I got so much. When I was in your position as a scout, I got so much from those who witness to me as leaders, that I feel I need to give something back. But the more that I try to give back, the more that I continue to get. That's the blessedness that can come to us if we're open to God's grace. Not because of my charm and good looks, as charming and good looking as I may be, 
but that's the grace that comes to us because God loves us. That's the grace that comes to us because Jesus walks with us. That's the grace that comes to us that allows us to be witnesses. And so as we gather here and we celebrate this Mass, as you scouts receive your emblems for the work that you have accomplished, do not see it as an end, but as another step on the way, another moment of grace, another opportunity to give witness. And as we are fed and nourished here together at the altar, having listened to God's Word, may we go forth from this place energized to be witnesses within our scouting, in, within our scouting family, within our families, within our community, and in our world. May we give witness that Jesus walks with us. Jesus taught us that as he has loved us, so we must love one another. Therefore, we turn now to God out of love for our neighbor. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and for all the leaders of, in our church, as they strive to follow Christ, the Good Shepherd, and encourage us to do the same, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Bishop Malesic, may he serve the Church of Cleveland as an instrument of Christ's compassion and healing for all in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elected officials of our country, that they may act with care and concern toward the people they serve, especially those with the greatest need. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all the young people of our diocese who are being called to the priesthood, the aconate, or religious life, that they may be attentive to the Lord's call to service and respond joyfully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from unjust treatment or discrimination, that Christians everywhere may advocate for them and may work for the greater justice in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who witness to their faith through the scouting movement, that they may grow in holiness and joy through their service of God and neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are honored today, that they may always use their talents and gifts to nourish and strengthen the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially all the deceased of the scouting movement in the Diocese of Greensburg, that the fullness of God's kingdom may be revealed to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all, out of love for the human race, you sent your Son to sacrifice himself for us. Through the intercession of St. George, help us to love one another as you have loved us, and grant the prayers we make out of that love through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Most merciful God, pour out your blessing upon these offerings and confirm us in the faith that blessed St. George professed by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty in salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr George, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us the eternal offering to you, so that we may make an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. George and Regis, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on faith and help. In the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your building church on earth. We can serve Francis our Pope, Benedict our Pope Emeritus, Edward our Bishop, Lawrence our retired Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people who you have gained for your love. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family who you have summoned before you this day. In the compassion of our Father, gather to yourself all your children who are scattered throughout the world. Glory. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you when they're passing from this life and trying to visit to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, king, for the kingdom, the, the power, and, and the, the glory, glory are, are yours, yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. He's good for others.
have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Made new by these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, that imitating the wondrous constancy of blessed St. George, we may merit an eternal reward for suffering endured through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Father Matthew gets to do what I usually do at Mass um, because we uh, have to try to minimize handing off and contact and so forth. Uh, we have the emblems here laid out, so Father Matthew will go through the presentation. And Scouts, as your name is called, you come up. We have them laid out here. Um, I will give you a hearty congratulations from a socially distant position um, as you get your emblem. I should probably have my face mask for this. Just like everybody else, I'm still trying to get used to it, too. Um, but yeah, uh, you come up and get your emblems, and I th hopefully um, it's in such a way that we can just kind of rotate around those. Uh, uh, and I know there's not a lot of us, but so we don't have to be climbing over one another. Okay. The Spirit Alive Emblem Program is designated for ninth and 10th grade girls to help them grow in their awareness of the Holy Spirit the third person of the Holy Trinity. By examining the revelation of the Holy Spirit through the scriptures and becoming aware of how the Holy Spirit has manifested himself throughout the history of God's people, the girl is encouraged to discover how the Holy Spirit moves in her life, calling her to greater participation in the church's ministry. From Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, Greensburg, Camille Ann Kuczynski. From Our Lady of Grace Parish in Greensburg, Emily Campbell, Marissa Hunter, and Rachel Tinney. And from Sacred Heart Parish, Jeanette, Haley Staup was unable to be with us this evening. The Region 3 Youth Recognition Pin is presented by the Diocesan Catholic Committee on Scouting for Girls on behalf of the Region 3 Catholic Committee for Girl Scouts and Campfire. It is presented to scouts who have completed at least three national religious emblems programs to recognize their hard work and commitment to growth in their faith lives throughout their scouting career. From Our Lady of Grace Parish Greensburg, Emily Campbell, Rachel Tinney, from Holy Family Parish Seward, Adrienne Marie Spadel, from Saint A from Saint Agnes Parish North Huntingdon, Catherine Musi. And Adrienne and Catherine were un also unable to be with us this evening. Uh, but also I was informed shortly before the Mass that Camille Kuczynski and, uh, and Marissa Hunter also have completed the emblems for that pin. We'll have to recognize them at a later time, but I would ask them to please stand and be recognized as well. The purpose of the Adultari Dei program is to help the Catholic youth of the Roman Rite develop a more fully Christian way of life in the faith community. The program is organized in chapters based on the seven sacraments. The most important aspect of the program 
is that the scout grows in his spiritual experience of his relationship to God and the church. From St. Anne Parish, Ross Draper, Joseph Kudla. Pope Pius XII is Catholic Scouting's church-related ministries and vocation program. It is designed for scouts and venturers of high school age. The program deals with different life vocations, occupations, and ministries in the church as calls from God and includes youth-led discussions on current issues facing the church and society. From St. Agnes Parish, North Huntington, Anthony Brown, Nicholas Brown, George Conserac, and Thomas Capasco, who was unable to be with us this evening. And let's give all of our emblem recipients, boys and girls, a round of applause. <laughs> well, Bishop Molesic wrote in his note, is true, it does take many hours of work. Uh, the scouts know that. Their moderators and uh, facilitators who worked with them know that. Um, I think probably parents, you know that as well, because... I think probably you had to drive them all there. I don't, any of you drivers yet? You have to get driven everywhere you go, right? Yeah. Uh, so the, it does take a lot of work and a lot of time. Uh, so congratulations to our emblem recipients. And a lot of people, as I said, a lot of people to thank. Those um, uh, around the diocese who are emblem uh, moderators and facilitators, those who work with the scouts, um, we appreciate their time uh, and energy. Um, family members for uh, doing all the support work that uh, is so much a part of being in scouting. You do it for emblems, you do it for um, all kind of other activities, and so um, thank you parents and families for your support uh, of your sons and daughters who are scouts uh, for, uh, for the work that they do. I want to thank my brother priests who are here with us tonight. Um, Father Dave, this is a homecoming for him. Uh, Joseph is a parishioner of his at St. Anne's, um, and uh, this is Father Dave is my predecessor here at St. Regis, so welcome Father Dave back, um, who's always been supportive over the years of the scouting program, we appreciate that, and Father Matthew and Father Doug and Father Dan, uh, who have been uh, long involved in our diocesan Catholic Committee on Scouting, as well as Deacon Steve, uh, who before he was Deacon Steve was just uh, Steve, our DCCS chair, um, back once upon a time. Um, and uh, our committee members who were here, uh, thank you uh, as well. Um, we do have uh, work to do. Um, we don't have get quite as many emblems as we used to, um, so we need, to, we need to do some committee work. We need to be witnesses. Uh, so for you who have done the emblems, you can be good witnesses to tell others how wonderful it is uh, to work on a religious emblem um, and, uh, and to get out the word and on building our committee as well. Uh, so we're always looking for those who are interested, older youth, uh, you know, age 16 and up, um, as well as adults who are interested in being part of our diocesan Catholic Committee on Scouting. Um, meetings are a little hinky right now for obvious reasons, um, but typically we meet four times a year, um, but to be able to um, you know, bolster our program, uh, we always need to have uh, fresh blood and fresh ideas. Uh, so please uh, consider that. Um, if you want to find out more, you can always ask me. Um, Father Matthew can answer a lot of questions. Um, our chair of our Diocesan Catholic Committee on Scouting is Chuck Boyer, who's there in the back row. Thank you, Chuck. Um, who has been our chair now for a number of years. And uh, Joe Ruggi is our vice chair, sitting right next to him. Um, they can answer a lot of questions as well. Unfortunately, coronavirus also means we can't do a cookie reception like we normally do, so I'm sorry. 
Um, but uh, hopefully we'll have the convocation back on the normal date next year, and I promise we'll have cookies. So, <laughs> so even if you're not getting an emerald next year, you can still come and have a cookie. Um, because as I said, this is not just about um, for the scouts who are getting emblems. We want this to be a celebration of Catholic scouting in our diocese. And God willing, maybe we'll even have um, our new bishop and a chance to meet our new bishop by next spring as well. Uh, so uh, there's that. Uh, please uh, continue to pray for Bishop Molesic. Um, I know he would very much appreciate it um, as he gets ready for uh, the move west. Um, it's very hard uh, to pick up uh, and have to move. We pastors have to do it from time to time, um, and uh, it, it never gets easy. Um, and so it's the same for um, Bishop Molesic. So please pray for him uh, during this time of transition with everything that's going to be going on with leaving here and sure he's getting all dumped on in Cleveland with everything that's going on out, you know, with everything they have in their diocese. Uh, so please continue to pray for him. And it's also a good time to point out that we need to pray in our own diocese. Uh, pray to the Holy Spirit that we will get a, another a good and wonderful shepherd, a strong, loving, and wise shepherd uh, to continue to help our church here in the Diocese of Greensburg to uh, move along. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God.